Hi, my name is Hector Acuna, and this is part five of an ongoing video series for the 30 by 30 by 30 exhibition at VAR Gallery in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So in this video, you're gonna see how I created these five egg tempera paintings, which are the first five of 30 four inch by five inch paintings um, made primarily with direct observation, inspired by or in direct reference to actual props that I've either collected or created by hand. So as I mentioned, this is part five in the series of videos. If you haven't watched the first four videos, I encourage you to go visit my channel and watch those videos where you're gonna see how I introduced the project, how I created the panels and prepared all of the materials um, and gathered inspiration from a few of my favorite egg temper painters. I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. All right, so as I'm preparing to start the first painting, the first thing that I have to do is make more of the egg tempera emulsion. So I'm taking um, the yolk from an egg and just drying off the rest of the membrane around the yolk before I pinch it into a clean jar. Um, and the nice thing is that the membrane is sticky enough that it just sticks to your hand while the actual yolk you know, spills out into your jar. So you just have to let it drain out all the way before you add equal parts of distilled water, uh, which is what I'm mixing right now. And I'm just using the back of a paintbrush to, um, you know, properly stir that emulsion before adding in vinegar. Um, what we're watching right now is the like changeover of some of my still life objects. I'm planning to do a painting based off of this small sketch from my moleskin. It's kind of a self-portrait with a hat and ear um, idea, so we'll have to work a little bit from photos, which I'll show here in a second. This is my work area. I have um, my reference photo that my wife took for me uh, in the studio, so it's a kind of profile image. Uh, I really liked the lighting and the big shadows under my jaw, so there's some interesting shapes by the beard and the ear in the reference photo. Um, right now I'm just sketching out with uh, a fairly hard pencil on the first panel for the project. So I'm just kind of getting back into the feel of the medium. I'm blocking in some of the larger areas of the composition and using my largest brush that uh, I pulled out. So um, eventually I switched over to a smaller round uh, and these are all Gray Matters brushes from Richeson. I really like these, these brushes for gouache, acrylic paint, or egg tempera. And as you can see, I'm starting to build up the layers. I didn't end up recording the entire process. I ended up um, bringing everything upstairs and finishing the painting up in our living room. So I don't have the full process uh, in the time lapse here. but. This is where it was at before I took the painting upstairs. You can see it's still a little bit rough, but I had just buffed the surface gently with a dry paper towel. And then this is where the painting ended up. So you can see this is in our living room on our coffee table. This is how the palette turned out um, and just the, the two ramekin uh, paint containers. I had my iPad there to paint from. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this sort of like dispersed mark making, um, you know, edging quality around the form in the object. And I tried not to put too much information in the environment. Most of the detail is really in the object itself. So that was the first painting that I finished. And then this is the morning of January 2nd. I woke up a little bit earlier than New Year's Day and had some time to revisit some of my uh, sketches over the last couple of years. So these are some of the pages that incorporate this box figure, um, anonymous, mysterious subject uh, that I've been toying with for the last couple of years. And I wanted to take some time and just go back and see what I've, you know, thought about in the past to see if maybe any of these ideas would, uh, would be fun to paint currently. So you're looking at some of my moleskin sketchbooks. These are loose uh, sketches with ink. Um, I think these were made with ink, like fountain brushes or ink water brushes, which was a lot of fun to use. I, I might revisit those materials during the project, um, but 
I really like these sketches. They have a very like graphic novel comic book feel to them. Um, and then there are just some other, you know, more recent sketches from the last couple of months that are shown in these pages here. As you can see, there are a lot of ideas that I've jotted down, um, and it was a really good way to kind of reignite the interest of the visual side of the project. So different ways to incorporate familiar objects like a vase with flowers, which you can see is what I'm starting to reference in these little uh, pen drawings. My wife has this little bouquet of flowers on our dining room table that caught my eye. I thought maybe it would be interesting to have the flowers morphing into fingers or hands or some other sort of um, piece of human anatomy. So that was the basis for the, the drawings. And then I spent some time flipping through my Andrew Wyeth book, um, just thinking about mark and shape and contrast and some of those formal qualities in painting and also looking at one of the George Tooker books as well. And I just thought it was pretty interesting that he also had some references of flowers and vases. Um, and then before I started painting, I went for a walk with our dog Lenny and I found this interesting leaf that I decided to bring back inside and maybe down the road I'll incorporate this into one of the paintings. So I brought the vase down into the studio, into my kind of like light box setup, and I really enjoyed the shapes of the uh, light that was casting onto the, the ground plane in the box. Um, and overall, it has a really interesting like low key value structure. So that gave me a, an idea of how I wanted to structure the, the larger shapes in the painting. So then I had time to start sketching out the idea uh, with pencil again. The initial sketch that I laid out had the box turned at an angle that I thought I would like, but there was something about the um, corner vertical line and how close it was to the vase that threw me off. Um, so I took a break and shot some reference material here with my phone. So I just took a video that I um, took snapshots uh, from later, just with different postures and poses of my hands, and brought that into a digital drawing app called Autodesk Sketchbook, which I use quite frequently. And I thought this was going to be the reference that I would use for the bouquet area of the painting. Uh, and then I began redrawing out uh, the placement of the vase and decided that uh, it would be more interesting if the fingers themselves took up more visual space in the painting. So I decided uh, to forego that digital design that I spent like half an hour putting together and instead just painted my fingers from observation uh, with my left hand. Um, and I spent up quite a bit quite a bit of time drawing out the design before I started laying in the base values with egg tempera. Um, and the second day I, I started to have a better sense of how much emulsion to mix in with the paint versus water. Um, using more of the emulsion, particularly with the raw umber pigment, I found is really necessary. Um, if it's too diluted with water, it ends up having this kind of grainy and very matte surface quality, um, which when I buff the surface then doesn't really buff out as evenly as the titanium white will. Partway through, I decided to paint over one of the fingers. I liked the asymmetrical look of the finger bouquet area where on the right side there's more of a vertical diagonal versus more of the horizontal uh, finger on the left half of the painting. Uh, it took a while to build up the right contrasts and value relationships not only in the fingers but in the box itself with the vase. Um, partway through painting this I uh, had taken a, a break for a few hours and was on a, a call with my mom actually and I was showing her some of the progress on this painting and over like FaceTime and uh, she was commenting on how dark the interior of the box was and how hard it was to distinguish the forms of the vase which it really helped having somebody point that out to me because when you're the maker of a painting and you know what you're trying to paint it can be easy to um, you know assume that something is easier to read and interpret than it it probably is so I spent some time really trying to address some of the more nuanced subtleties in value and in the contrasts of the vase that I was seeing in my still life setup. So this is where I'm going back in and 
and rebuilding part of that image uh, later that evening. And I really like this painting a lot. It has this very um, uh, kind of romantic feel to me. Uh, I think the lighting and the mood inside the box has its own kind of universe that um, I hope to find in future paintings. And this is pretty much how it turned out. I really, I really liked this one, um, the way that it came together. The fingers were a lot of fun to paint, and I learned a lot about using more of an economical approach to abbreviating some of the small creases and details of the fingers. Later on, once this cures, after a few more weeks, I'll probably try to buff the surface to even out some of those matte brush strokes that you can see when I tilt the painting. There's the reference still life again. And we can see how the painting looks next to our first one. It's fun to start to see these side by side. Um, and uh, start to see themes and sort of visual um, properties starting to connect across different paintings. And in between the sessions overnight, I store the emulsion and any leftover paint in the refrigerator just to keep it from uh, drying out or spoiling. All right, day three, I wanted to play around with some of the sketches that I've been making where you can see fingers you know, coming out of the box or uh, pushing their way out of the form of the box. Um, so I wanted to make a prop that would help me in, um, in documenting photography or video clips with my own hands or maybe even hands from friends or family members down the road. So I started cutting out these different circles for uh, my fingers to go through and already started to play around with the different gestures and kind of pointing qualities that um, can now become part of the project as well. Cardboard is one of my favorite materials because it is so malleable and it's really easy to find and it's really affordable um, if you even have to pay for it. Most of the cardboard that I use is saved cardboard from packaging and shipping of, of things that we order. The next thing that I wanted to try out was sculpting my own finger out of this plasticine clay. If you're not familiar with plasticine clay, it's an oil-based clay, so it, it doesn't dry out. And um, the only thing is if you don't use it, it kind of starts to stiffen up and it can take a while for it to be um, more carvable and sculptable, if that's even a word. Um, so I spent some time really warming up the clay between my hands before getting some of the carving tools that I have uh, in my studio. What I'm doing here is just rolling out kind of a, a tubular shape to form the base of the finger before I can actually start shaping out the, the knuckles and the nail. And all of this process is basically from observation too. I just sort of will pause and compare the form to my my left pointer finger and um, you know I'm just sort of making these really quick uh, comparisons through observation of you know how long the nail is supposed to be how wide the tip of the nail is supposed to be where the creases are when I you know kind of fold my finger over um, it was a lot of fun to think more three-dimensionally for this part of the process the next step was to experiment with putting the finger through those cardboard holes um, and start to use this as my uh, kind of like actor uh, for a, a, a scene that I wanted to create. So um, again, this is all kind of based on uh, various sketches that I've been making in my sketchbook recently of, of fingers coming out of the box as opposed to full arms and hands, which I've, I've made a lot of sketches that way as well. Obviously here I'm just sort of staging the piece of cardboard inside of the box. That way I can um, look at it with more dramatic overhead lighting. I really like the shadow that's cast on this plane of the cardboard um, and how that counteracts the curve of the finger. And pretty early on I, I started to see some associations to more of a phallic kind of representation with this little sculpted finger sticking out of the box but um, you know I debated for a while if I should keep going with this form and 
I decided that, you know, really the interpretation is up to the viewer. But um, for me, a lot of the studio work that I've made since grad school um, does start to point towards themes of, you know, masculinity and the body and, um, you know, just these sort of odd and awkward um, uh, arrangements of forms and identity. So that was something that I, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to keep going and, and see what happens and try not to uh, control the process too much. So here I am making some sketches and drawings of the finger, um, trying to think of it you know, in, in a proportion and a scale to the size of the box that I um, think would be more interesting and would work better formally for the painting. And um, this was the first time I had to start to make more of the paint. So this is kind of like round two of paint making. I ended up needing to restock the umber paint as well. Um, and then this was the thumbnail that I landed on for this uh, third um, painting in the series. And you might notice that um, the orientation of the paintings is bouncing back and forth between a like portrait to landscape, uh, vertical to horizontal uh, arrangement. So this third one is going back to a horizontal four inch high by five inch wide painting. And um, I really had a lot of fun making this painting. It was it was really exciting to start to think about the environment of the subject of the box and um, create more of a mood and uh, a real space. So I thought about architecture and I thought about more of a landscape and a sky and tried to build out more of a believable uh, view in the painting. So this is where uh, the third painting ended up. And you can see I had to use that white small cardboard box to think about the lighting of the form itself um, before I started packing everything up. So on day four, I was starting to um, apply a little bit more humor into this project. I was starting to think about how the box could change its uh, sense of scale and playing around with objects that were gonna be larger than the box. So I checked our closet in our living room and found my wife's um, winter boot, which had a really interesting kind of shape and character um, that I thought would work well on this sort of foot box combination. Uh, so I got to work on uh, looking for a box that was narrow enough to fit with a winter sock inside the boot um, to create this kind of strange leg morphing into a geometric box form um, and really had a, a fun time playing around with the textures and the sense of dimensionality on the leg. Uh, here you can see I'm applying some small little hatching lines for hair growing on the leg. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm having a lot of fun adding in these really kind of strange and uh, comical details into the compositions that I'm coming up with. It's also a lot of fun to start with a sketch and to see how a really rough idea drawn out with pen or pencil um, can feel a lot more Fill, full or filled out uh, as a painting and to incorporate things like depth and um, you know distance or perspective with the landscape that is invented in a painting like this one. So by day four I felt like I was really starting to hit uh, my stride and find a groove in how I was um, building up the images through line and through layers with uh, egg tempera. Uh, the boot one was one of my favorite paintings that I made during the first uh, week of, of the project. It's also really cool to see the painting side by side with the uh, reference still life set up there. Uh, it was a lot of fun to try to mimic the gradual value change around the shadow on the foreground. All right, so here's the work area. You can see my paint was starting to dry out at this point. Um, and there was a little bit of wet paint left in the container. So I thought I would try to leave it overnight and see if it would be workable in the morning. But I ended up having to make fresh paint for day five, which you can see here. Um, it always feels really good to start with fresh paint for a new painting. Um, and I went back to my sketchbook and really wanted to try out this idea that I came up with a few weeks ago of this like box human torso 
uh, view where the head of the body is just barely poking out of the sweater. So I went down to our basement and looked for a cardboard box that I thought would be about the right size to uh, wrap a sweater or a shirt around. You can see we have a lot of choices here from Amazon boxes and other art material boxes that we've hung on to for uh, sold paintings that I have to pack and ship. The next step was to find a sweater that I wanted to paint from my closet. I ended up going with this Henley style sweater that was a navy blue color. So I tried to wrap this and stretch it around the cardboard box. And right away I could tell that this was going to work out well. Again, it's it's kind of fun to see how a really loose, brief idea just sketched out within a few seconds um, or maybe a few minutes with a pen translates once you're actually working with real dimensional materials like this. My dog Lenny thought it was pretty funny what I was doing as well. Um, so the next thing I was doing was adding in extra t-shirts and other clothes to create this organic sense of volume in the shoulder neck area that way it was going to seem a little bit more realistic or naturalistic to having a, a model inside of the sweater because again i want this illusion that the body turns into a box right and we don't see the head poking out so it's this really weird squished um, idea that just feels very um you know restrictive and feels very um I don't know, kind of private, it, which is something that I really enjoyed uh, discovering in the making of this painting. The lighting that I went with was overall fairly low key. It's very dark um, painting, especially on the top part of the painting. And to create that separation between the hair and the background, I had to add in this small uh, value shift that created almost like this glowing halo effect around the shoulders and around the hair. But I really like the organic layering of line and how it creates this kind of busy web of mark. These video clips here are real speed, so you can see how slow this process is of building up the marks and slowly building up the layers on the panel. Hopefully you can get a good sense of what the surface quality is like on these panels too. Um, obviously you can see the uh, kind of like slight reflective quality that the surface has as well. That's the end of the fifth painting. Let me know which of the first five paintings I made was your favorite. Hope you enjoyed watching the process. Well, that wraps up the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or would like to leave feedback, please add that in the comments below the video. Um, again, my name is Hector Acuna. If you want to learn more about my work, please visit my website, acunaarts.com. You can also follow along with the project on Instagram at Hector Acuna period studio, or check out my plein air work, Hector Acuna period plein air. That's it. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye.